From the studios of Tucson Business Radio X, recorded in the Stewart Title Corporate Offices on Broadway, you are now listening to The Mark Bishop Show. And now here's your host, Mark Bishop. Well, according to the 20th Annual Technology Vision Report from Accenture, even though people are embedding technology into their lives more than ever before, organizations' attempts to meet their needs and expectations can fall short as companies work to deliver on their digital promises and in a world where digital technology is everywhere. A new mindset and approach is required. We have Michael Biltz, the Managing Director of the Accenture Technology Vision Report. Welcome, Michael. Uh, Thank you for having me. Michael, what is this new mindset and approach do you feel that organizations do need to address? Yeah, so I think that the new mindset, you know, is to really start to understand that the people of the world are different than the way they were. You know, when you think about people's lives today, is the you, you suddenly realize that it's completely integrated with technology. And whether you're talking about an Amazon or a Walmart, <clears throat> you know, looking to, you know, ask for your key to your house so they could automatically deliver packages or mm. whether you're talking about, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, selling your car because you've got access to a uh, Lyft or Uber is that suddenly both businesses and technologies are being entwined into our lives in very different ways. And what this has done is it's created an entirely new set of expectations from consumers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The slicker we get, the more we want, isn't it really? In whichever way you look at it. It is. Now, yeah, I mean, so it's part of it. Part of it is that never ending bar that's being raised. You know, you look at somebody like, um, you know, we were having a discussion with the, the CIO for uh, Kaiser Permanente, and they made a comment, you know, that it was this expectation that consumers had that because they could have a mobile app that instantly in 30 minutes delivers their pizza is the, there was the expectation from them that they should be able to deliver their prescription drugs online in the same type of manner. And so it's not even necessarily a competition thing. You know, it's that expectation that says Mm. the, if consumers are going to expect it, then suddenly that bar really gets raised for everyone. Yeah, I want it now sort of thing. Well, at least I get texts from, you know, my Walgreens pharmacy in reference to your, uh, uh, you know, your medicines are waiting for you, but uh, you still got to wait when you get there. I mean, you know, it's not going to happen in five seconds, is it? You have insights. No, it's definitely. Go on. No, I was going to say, you know, it's definitely not going to happen, but I, I think that the, the crazy thing that we're seeing is, is the, you know, that's the world that we've been living with, you know, over the last, you know, number of years, but we're actually starting to see consumers really go to that next level on top of it. Mm. You know, is that they're realizing that as my life is essentially being lived around these technologies and shaping those technologies is that they're starting to ask for not just the tech or the services themselves, but they're starting to ask companies to make sure that how they build the technology, how the technology is delivered, how it's used actually matches their not just the value it provides, but their individual value. Right. And so we suddenly see things like sustainability. You know, we see things like privacy. You know, we see things, you know, that are very much value-based becoming more and more a part of how companies are competing and how they're differentiating themselves in the marketplace. Well, you have insights uh, from the Accenture Technology Vision 2020 report which is based on a survey of more than 6,000 business executives and some 2,000 consumers. Uh, It shares key tech trends for impacting business over the next three years. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, and a a lot of what we see, you know, as we look into those tech trends, you know, becomes this intermingling, you know, of technology and values you know, into, you know, a single entity, you know, as the, Mm -hmm. you know, we've kind of been expecting over the last number of years for there to be this tech lash that, you know, the amount of bad press that we see happening in the marketplace, you know, is that people are going to start to push back and not adopt technology. And frankly, we we haven't seen that at all. You know, right now, I think we, we crossed the 4 billion mark in terms of the number of people who are online. And on average, people spend, I think, over a quarter of their life, you know, online. And so we're not seeing that happen at all. Rather, 
all of this thing is a tech clash, you know, that says the it's not the technology they're objecting to, you know, as much as it is, you know, either how well it's implemented, you know, right. as that frustration can happen, you know, and then a combination of the it's implemented, you know, but it's not actually aligning to my value system, you know, and I think that that's that interesting piece that says, you know, a number, you know, three, four years ago, you know, the sea levels are all talking about, you know, efficiency, <clears throat> you know, products and services, you know, and nowadays is that they're also talking about, you know, ethics, they're talking about values, they're talking about privacy, and all of these things have suddenly risen to a point that that's what big companies are talking about because that's become the new expectation. So in your view, Michael, how do companies adopt a more human focus? How do they better meet uh, people's expectations? What's the best thing they can do? Yeah, and I, I, it's trust. And, and this is the interesting thing is just the, you know, you, you're talking about companies, you know, and a lot of them, you know, have had, you know, a, a very distant relationship with their consumers, you know, and themselves, you know, is that, you know, they sell a product, you know, and then they, go someplace else and the next interaction with most of their consumers isn't either till they have a problem or until they sell another product. Yeah. You know, now we're talking about smart things that says you're interacting back and forth. People are shaping and changing their lives around it. And so what you're really trying to do is build a increased level of trust that says, is it okay for a business to have your data? Because the, the more data they have about you and the better they understand you, the more services that they can provide. Mm. You know, would you trust somebody with a key to your house? Because it's super valuable to not have to be home to get a package, you know, but the level of trust that you need for that is something that, you know, hasn't really been required before, you know, and that takes a, a different mindset, you know, and a different journey for how, not on a global basis or on a societal basis, but on a one-on-one -on -one basis with an individual comp customer that says, how do I build the trust so this specific person trusts me enough in order to exchange data, you know, exchange, mm. you know, that ability to create, you know, services that really are in your home, you know, in your cars, you know, with your children. Yeah, it is. And it's pretty scary because, you know, uh, the lucky ones, the younger generation that have been able to be brought up in schools with computers, uh, they're on, uh, you know, iPhones and so on. Uh, for more seniors, um, it's still tougher, it's still learning. Uh, trust is everything in business anyway, which people, it's come right around 180 degrees and that's where things are. But when it comes to online, sometimes I hate the fact that you can never contact them. It's all got to be online. This no no phone calls and there's no human person. Bots are there instead, you know? How do you trust that? <laughs> well, I, but I think that's the point. I mean, you, you almost said it, you know, immediately yourself is the the reason that you crave that person is because you don't trust them. You know, and you know, I, I look at it that says the there are certain companies and there are certain institutions, you know, that we already trust and they have an enormous amount of information out. So think about something like um, a credit card company is the <clears throat> they know how much money you make. They know everything that you buy. They know what your family got for Christmas before they did. They know when you travel. I mean, the amount of information they actually have about you is staggering. But they've spent the last 50 years building up a level of trust that says people are OK with some of the automation pieces, you know, people are actually, you know, happy, you know, to have a text alert instead of a person calling about, you know, a potential fraudulent charge and all of these things that, you know, people complain about and worry about is not something that a lot of these companies have to deal with because they've actually built and invested this trust for longer periods of time. Mm. And so you're seeing now is the, you're seeing companies that, haven't had that viewpoint or haven't had to, needed that viewpoint, you know, for a long time, just now figuring out that they have to create a new level of trust in order to build 
that next generation of services they have because it really is going to be so intertwined into everything we do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're just about got to go. But on that point, I want to make a note, uh, you know, credit where it's due, I guess. But Amazon have done this well, you know, with their regional people all across the country uh, who may work out of their home. But I remember purchasing something, had a little issue, didn't want it. And within 15 minutes, I had a phone call about, uh, okay, let's fix this up. It's service. And I was very, very pleased and very amazed. I didn't think that sort of thing went on. I thought it was just, you know, back to somewhere online again. But they took the step to still keep human services within the tech field. And, and that was a smart move. No, know. and no, it, it is. And they're not the only ones. I mean, if you take a look, you look at somebody like Costco, is the they have an incredible return policy that's almost a no mm. no questions asked. Mm-hmm. You know, they also do things like, you know, they're very vocal about, you know, how they uh, treat their employees and the benefits that they give them. But they're very f- pushing this idea that says they want people to understand both their values and understand, you know, that it's very clear they're trying to build a level of trust you know, with their consumers in order to keep them coming back. And I think that this, instead of becoming, you know, I'm going to say a lone example is that more and more is the, this is going to become a a way that people are going to be doing business. And Mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot of companies picking sets of values from sustainability to, you know, how they treat their workers, you know, as platforms, you know, for how they both position themselves, brand themselves and, you know, build trust in their communities. Fascinating stuff. Uh, Michael Biltz, he leads uh, Accenture's technology vision. It's uh, an R&D group in the company's annual technology visioning process. And uh, through this process, Michael defines Accenture's perspective on the future of technology beyond the current conversations about social, cloud, mobility, and big data. Fascinating stuff, Michael. It'll be good to chat to you again sometime. Now, people can go to what www.accenture.com slash technology vision. Is that right? That's right. Or you can just go ahead and Google Accenture Technology Vision. Fantastic. A lot of great information. And, uh, well, you're sort of a uh, predicting ahead, aren't you, mate? You know, you're a bit of a psychic there. (laughs) (laughs) That's the the goal. All right. Good stuff. Thank you, Michael. Have a great week. All right. You too. Goodbye now. 